I'm not 18 through 25 anymore. So I'm kind of over those. I don't want to say identity issues, but I'm over like that angst. You sure about that? No, I'm not. <laughs> Yo, and welcome back to another Honest Take. Today, we're reacting to the band Loveless and his new song, I Hope I'm Not Sick. Now, if you don't remember Loveless, he had a viral TikTok, I think, and it was to the song Middle of the Night. And I'll show you a quick clip right here. So this right here went, I would say fairly viral, like probably like five or 10 million views just on YouTube, but it went like super viral on TikTok. And he's really built his band from this one short, I think. I mean, I don't follow him that closely, but the cover's great. What if it was pop punk? <laughs> So check him out. His handle is This Is Loveless. And we're going to jump into his new song right now. Guys, as always, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And let's jump into this. Don't even like this. Swear it isn't mine. No, it's not becoming. No, it isn't fine. Wish that I could be somebody else. Back when I was uh, doing show promotions and, you know, not mentoring, but helping out bands along the way, there were a couple bands that did this uh, video trope where they're in a hospital. They're like riding in on the, uh, the sick beds. They weren't dancing in the room, though, but it's fairly common in the world of uh, pop punk, I think this genre is. Sick, I dream in broken promises that start to set in a way. I really like his singing rhythms. You know, I'm I'm a fan of this guy just because I listened to that uh that middle of the night track thousands of times. <laughs> I was a huge fan of that. I mean, this is this is good so far, but I feel like it's not doing his register justice. You know, here I am just some guy who can't sing is mediocre at music at best and I'm trying to critique this guy who's you know, clearly got killer chops. Get up or stay down. Wish that I could be somebody else. Anybody does I get down as much. I hope I'm not sick. I dream in broken promises that start to set in. I wish that I could let me win. I hope I'm not sick. I dream in broken promises that start to set in. So this feels very uh, like schools out for the summer type vibes, you know, let's escape the hospital. Let's, I don't want to be sick anymore. Let's get out of here. And they like break free in a uh, funny way, like a Bill and Ted's kind of adventure, which I love it. You know, I'm just not, you know, I'm not 18 through 25 anymore. So I'm kind of over those. I don't want to say identity issues, but I'm over like that angst. No, I'm not. <laughs> It's gotten better though. It's gotten a little better. Not safe in the back of my head. Roller coaster type reaction. Get me up. I feel like crashing. Never finding satisfaction. But I hope I'm not sick. I dream in broken promises. That I, I wish that I could let me win. I hope I'm not sick. I dream in broken promises. Start to set in. I wish that I could let me win. I hope 
<laughs> I like that hook though, dream and empty promises. That's a good line. And especially in a genre that is saturated with those. I don't want to call them one liners, but I don't know what else to call them. I'll call them hooks. Yeah, I dream in empty promises. I like that. That's that's a cool that's a cool hook. I am concerned with how songs in general are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And I think the reason that is is that they're just trying to cram in as many memorable lines as possible, hoping that they'll get uh, trimmed in a way for either TikTok or Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. But everybody's looking for like that 15 to 35 second viral clip, you know, because if you can get that, I mean, you'll become famous overnight. I mean, it's happened to countless artists and uh, it's happening so much to the point where people are just using music they like. They don't even know who the artist is. That happened with uh, Snowfall. Do you know that song Snowfall? You, you have. It's on like, it's everywhere. And the artist himself comes out and he's like guess who wrote this song and he's like me i wrote this song and he points to his youtube subscription count and it's at like twenty thousand. when he should have like you know two or three million it's uh it's the best and the worst thing that's ever happened to music this this freedom of this ability to go viral so quickly without you know the labels the industry the recording studios you could just sing something on your phone and be like boom it's a, vi it's a viral sound and uh, there's a beautiful freedom in that, but there's also a dangerous result or there's a dangerous side effect of seeking that out. And I feel like it's, it's causing music to not really have a journey anymore. It's just very like this level, it stays there and then it's over. You know, there's no, there's not really a journey anymore of the, a soundscape. There's no soundscape. I'm not accusing Loveless of doing this. It just, I look down and the song is only two minutes and 33 seconds long, which is short to say the least. I mean, 15 years ago, music was what? Three minutes and 40 seconds. Like that's almost 50% less music. Yeah, and I think I think social media and Instagram and TikTok and the shorter and shorter attention span is causing it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just a thing that's happening. And, you know, sometimes, but on the flip side of that, what, what this younger generation is doing is that they're looping the songs. You know, you'll see on YouTube where it's like hour long of this two minute song or you know EDM really shows this there'll be like one hook and then there'll be like 15 minutes of just the same thing and then boom the drop will come in and then like ah, everybody goes crazy and I, I don't really understand the disconnect why can't you have a four minute song with a drum solo a guitar solo a bass solo and I think it comes down to the audience not feeling connected it feels like because we live in a very like what is the musician doing for me opposed to like the 1960s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, where it's like, what can we do for the artist? There was more like a godlike approach to musicianship where it's more focused on the fan now. And again, it's not a good or a bad thing. It's just a thing I've noticed. And if you disagree, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. I'm getting too many comments right now, so it's really hard for me to respond to all of them. But uh I tend to watch the comments on these videos a little bit closer than the shorts, just because the shorts get so much exposure. But uh, yeah, as always, guys, I'm going to leave it right there. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you like me, I love you. And if you don't, you can fuck off. Peace.